Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning and welcome to the United States Naval Academy 1100 Protestant Virtual Worship Service. My name is Chaplain Miller and I am so glad you have taken the time this morning to join us in worship. You'll see that we are joined by midshipmen from across the country who will lead us in worship. I'm also joined this morning uh, by Monty Maxwell and of course Chaplain Orsburn who will deliver God's word to us today. Well first I want to give a most heartfelt congratulations to all of our graduates of the class of 2020. Uh, we are praying for you and we are excited for you, our newly commissioned ensigns and second lieutenants, and I know that I speak for all the chaplains when I say we are excited about seeing you in the fleet and being able to work with you, whether with the Navy or our Marine Corps team. I know many of you may be curious about our reopening plan for the chapel. Be assured that as soon as we are able to share those details with you, we will. But for now, I hope this virtual environment will be an opportunity for you to connect with God and worship. And you may not be here in this chapel, but invite Christ into the cathedral of your heart this morning as you join us for worship. Well, I want to share the words of Psalm 100 for our call to worship today. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name for the Lord is gracious. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures from generation to generation. And now following along in your bulletin, will you please join us for our opening hymn, Crown Him With Many Crowns.
And now will you please bow with me in prayer. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, the first chapter beginning with the sixth verse. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up. And a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into the heavens as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the zealot and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Go. It is a simple word of action. Two letters. G-O. Two simple letters that can generate tremendous change and action. Forty-three days ago, we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the grave. For 40 days, Christ appeared here and there in various gospel accounts. On the 40th day after Easter, our Lord ascended into heaven. We celebrated this event in the Christian calendar with a special feast of the Ascension this past Thursday. On the 40th day after the resurrection, it was time for our Lord to go. It was time for him to return to the Father. Our reading from the Acts of the Apostles this morning recounted the story of the Ascension. When the Apostles had to come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set of his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, they were gazing up toward heaven. Suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way you saw him go to heaven. My favorite account of the ascension is found in Matthew's Gospel. It is in this account of the event we find what we call the Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Go, therefore, and make disciples. The Christian life is a life of action. We must go. Our calling is to go. The very fact that the Christian faith is practiced throughout the world is proof of Christian action. The disciples departed Galilee, and they spread the truth of the gospel. They did not gather at the temple to remain there and to await for the world to arrive. They traveled, and they preached, and they made disciples. Tradition says Peter traveled to Antioch and established the faith in that place, becoming its first bishop. He finally arrived in Rome, where he faced his martyrdom. Ancient tradition calls Andrew the apostle to the Greeks. He too was martyred. James the Greater is thought to be the first apostle martyred. The Acts of the Apostles records that Herod the king laid violent hands upon those who belonged to the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. John was the only apostle to live out his natural life, but not without trial. As he writes in the Apocalypse, I, John, your brother, who share with you in Jesus the tribulation and the kingdom and the patience and endurance, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Little is known about Philip and Bartholomew, with traditions taking them to various places, yet both died as martyrs. Thomas is believed to have taken the gospel to India, where his memory is held dear to this very day, dying there a martyr. Tradition takes Matthew to his martyrdom in Ethiopia, Judas Thaddeus and Simon the Zealot to theirs in Lebanon, James the Less to his in Jerusalem as he pastor the church in very troubling times. And finally, Matthias, to his martyrdom in Cappadocia. They preached, they baptized, they made disciples, and now the faith is found the world over. Go. Faith led these men to action, and it led them to trial. Peter himself would write of trial in his first epistle, saying, 
Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. So Peter says, go, and do not fear being tested. Go and be alert, for you shall be tested. Go and know that Christ will restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. Go. Go. The time for the idleness of faith in the Western church has long since passed. The world is not going to come to us to hear the gospel. We must go. We must share the faith. But before we go, we must be prepared. Next week, we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. And we believe that the Holy Ghost has indeed been sent to comfort us during this time. Lean upon the Spirit. Study pray, labor in the faith, and prepare for your journey. So where shall you go? Perhaps you shall first go to those whom you have injured in the past and ask for forgiveness. Perhaps you shall go to your family, your siblings, children, and friends and share with them why you believe this faith. Perhaps you shall go to your neighbor, co-workers, complete strangers, Simply go and trust that God will be with you and that the Spirit will give you utterance. As I said before, we go, we must be prepared. Over the past four years, the class of 2020 prepared itself to go, to fulfill their own commissions. And now they are going. They will go the world over to the far side of the world, and even close to home. And for each of you who departs this place in the class of 2020 as a Christian, you go in that very faith, not leaving it behind at this chapel or in this place. You take it with you. You go. And in going, you will take the gospel to the far ends of the world. So be certain that when you go and you lead, The men and women you lead know why you lead the way you lead. That they know who your true Lord is and why you stand upon the ground that you stand. And when you are there, go to those others in the faith and join with them and strengthen yourselves. Lift each other up in company with each other. Stand firm. And for all of us, we must stand firm and preach what is true. But as Christians, we proclaim a truth to a world that forces us to stand, sometimes in dissent. And sometimes we stand in dissent in our own church or in our own family. We must stand firm, but do not stand in one place too long. Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So let us go and make disciples the world over in our own homes, our own neighborhoods. Let us go with Christ. Amen. And now if you'd like to kneel with me in prayer. Will you please join me as I offer this morning's pastoral prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. 
We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. And God, this morning we lift up our entire Naval Academy team, to our midshipmen who are looking forward to their summer programs and what the academic year will hold next year, to our graduates who are now hitting the fleet and preparing to be Navy and Marine Corps officers, to all of our faculty and staff as they adjust, and to our leadership, our commandant, our superintendent, as they make difficult decisions about how to ensure continual mission readiness. We pray for our ministers around the world as they adjust to sharing the gospel and to the continual worship of you and our chaplains at the academy as we continue to strive to bring your word and your grace into the lives of those who need it. God, we're mindful this week of a service member who lost his life in Afghanistan, First Lieutenant Traverius Bowman, who died on May 19th from non-combat related injuries. We lift up his family to you, his friends, his loved ones. May your love and your grace and your peace and your comfort wash over them. And for all those who are struggling with the loss of loved ones, with the death of loved ones or friends, or just the fear or the anxiety or the uncertainty that comes in this time. May your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. And now, God, we pray, as Jesus taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now will you please join me out loud, follow along in your bulletin, as I offer our prayer of a midshipman. Almighty Father, whose way is in the sea, whose paths are in the great waters, whose command is over all, and whose love never faileth. Let me be aware of thy presence and obedient to thy will. Keep me true to my best self, guarding me against dishonesty in purpose and in deed, and helping me so to live that I can stand unashamed and unafraid before my shipmates, my loved ones, and thee. Protect those in whose love I live. Give me the will to do my best and to accept my share of responsibilities with a strong heart and a cheerful mind. Make me considerate of those entrusted to my leadership and faithful to the duties my country has entrusted in me. Let my uniform remind me daily of the traditions of the service of which I am a part. If I am inclined to doubt, steady my faith. If I am tempted, make me strong to resist. If I should miss the mark, give me courage to try again. Guide me with the light of truth and keep before me the life of him by whose example and help I trust to obtain the answer to my prayer, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Again, I'm glad that you have joined us this morning, and I hope this has been a time that has enriched your heart and given you hope, courage to face the week ahead. And as we go, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.